from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. All right, yeah, that's pretty cool. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. The Christian Science Monitor says that women are uh, particularly hit hard by the lousy economy. And I say maybe they shouldn't spend so much. Maybe they should read uh, the fine print where they get a credit card, find out what the APR is. We would have more subprime mortgages than men's because they make less money because they got lousier credit than men do. It's just the way it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you going, Tom? Going great, Mike. Uh, Tom, uh... I started listening to your show after I got my girl pregnant, unfortunately, and uh, I started to find out little by little everything you say is true. But uh, one thing I heard you say earlier about don't let your girl use uh, your cards or nothing like that. Um, one thing I do let my girl use is when she goes grocery shopping, I let her use my ATM, but I have her bring it back to me when, I, when she's done. Is that a no-no? Of course. Now, really? and now, are you uh, are you paying child support? No, she lives with me. I take care of my daughter. We're not married, though. And why do you why do you live with her? Well, because I have a daughter with her. Doesn't mean you have to live with her. Yeah, but I mean things are. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, like I said, I started listening to you after. After uh, she got pregnant and we were already living together, and now I start to see everything you say is like 100% true. And are you aware that when you go to the store, frequently the cashier will say to you, would you like an extra 40 bucks? Yeah, but I... I How I, I would you know? Because I, I check the receipt and I always check my, uh, my bank statements. I, I make sure that she doesn't take nothing out. Well, all it tells you is what the total is. Well, I mean, on the on, on on the receipt of the from the store, it'll tell you what she bought and everything as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if it's a bad thing to do, then I I definitely will stop. I wouldn't do it because then you don't have control over how much she's spending. Yeah. And tell me, she doesn't spend too much. Uh, she spends a, a good amount. Is she's that too much enough. or not too much? I mean, I don't know what is too much because you know I don't I don't do grocery shopping. That thing's for that's for the women anyway. Maybe you, you need know. to learn. Maybe you need to learn about that. Yeah, I probably do. You're paying for it. She spends about seventy dollars a week. I don't know if that's too much or not for the three of you. Yeah, for the three of us. Well, that's not that much, really. Yeah, but I mean, but, you know, could it come back and hurt me? Like, if you know what I mean, because. Wouldn't you, rather, wouldn't you rather just give her 70 bucks? Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Because what happens when she says, I, I need to get gas, too? <laughs> yeah, you're right, Tom. Has she done that? No, no, she doesn't do that. Not yet. Well, it's been, a, it's been two years. That's not a long time, Mike. Yeah, that's true. And you had a baby, why? Uh, the condom broke. And you had sex with a woman who was not using birth control. Why? I wasn't listening to you at the time, Tom. Right. <laughs> and as you see, a woman who wasn't using birth control, 
Why don't women use birth control? Because they want to have kids. Because they want to have a kid. That's right. The women who don't use birth control want to have your kid. Well. You definitely. understand that? Yes, I do. She knew what she was doing. And she was hoping for the day that condom would slip or break or leak. And finally she got her wish. Yeah. Yep. The funny thing is, though, that like every time we, we we're about to break up, she tells me that, you know, I'm going to leave you with your daughter. You're going to be stuck with her. Are you worried about that? No, I mean, I'm actually would be more, if, I'd be more happy. If, you know, I wouldn't have to pay child support. And I know well, you'd, have, you'd have to pay daycare, of course. Yeah, but at least I know that she ain't running around with all kinds of guys. Why would why would you know that? Well, I mean, if if we weren't together, she'd be running around with all kinds of guys and having my daughter with her. All right, you you would much prefer to have uh, your daughter and uh, and deal with the daycare issues and stuff. But at least that way, you wouldn't have to pay her child support. Exactly. And uh, of course, that would assume you were not sharing custody. But if she just gave full custody to you, that would save you child support. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have to worry about what she's doing with her time or the money you're giving her. Exactly. So maybe it'd be a gift. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Mike, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. Here comes Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Professor, how are you? I'm okay. Good, good. My question to you is this. I'm seeing a lot of girls doing my thing. I'm 20 years old. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm pretty financially stable and well offset. And um, I've been seeing this girl for about five years. She's always been like a close like friend, you know, that, you know, we've been like a uh, phone in and stuff. She's and a friend with benefits? Yeah, exactly. But it's like more than that, you know, like she's kind of a special girl to me, like out of the, the ones that I'm banging right now. I'm not just trying to sound like an arrogant guy, but it is what it is. And uh, Well, does she know you're banging another girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows it's like that. But, you know, she's been like the girl that can come around the family and, like, have dinner and do stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, I go out with and just, like, see Casper like that. You know what I'm saying? But, right. like, the question is, is, like, you mentioned earlier in the show that, you know, if girls aren't bringing anything to the table right now, like, with their selves, like, should you keep them around, period? Because, like, this girl, she's a great girl and all, like, personality is good. The sex is awesome. But I don't know if I should, like, keep her around because she's not really doing much with herself. She doesn't go to school. She's supposedly doing some stuff for her dad's piling company or whatever, but you know how that goes. So I just want to know, you know, what you think I should do. What would you what, do? What, she's supposedly do? doing stuff, but what? I'm sorry? She's supposedly doing stuff for her dad's what? Piling company. Piling? Yeah. What is that? I guess cutting tiles and pulling tiles. Oh, yeah, so tiling with a T. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. She supposedly works for her dad's tiling company. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You can't have a, first of all, at 20, you should not have a girlfriend. Yeah, well, it's not like a, you know, I'm not seeing her exclusively. Like, she knows she's not the only girl that I'm seeing. But there shouldn't be one who thinks she's the girlfriend or that she has any upper hand over any of the others. All right, and that's all right. especially true when they are slugs who don't do anything. True, true. These are the ones who are likely to accidentally get pregnant. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Now, what, right. Is your, uh, what is your condom situation? Do you use them? All the time, all the time. I've been listening to you for a while. Does, yeah. she use, does she use birth control? Yes, she does. Yes, she does. What does she use? I don't know, but I've seen her take it. Like, I've witnessed her like, do it. What do you mean you don't know? I don't, I don't ask her. I never asked her. It, well, it's time to start getting more intimate with that question. All right, all right. You need to be concerned about these things, son. I'm listening. I'm listening. You need to be concerned. Okay. How do you know that what she's taking is birth control? What's that? If you haven't discussed it with her, how well, do no. you know that what she's taking is birth control? No, like I've asked her, like, do you take birth control? And she's like, yes, yeah. she showed me. I didn't ask her what kind of birth control it was, and then she took it. Like, And how do you know she's like, taking it every month or taking it all the time? You know what? I can't keep a tabs on that, so I'm praying that she's... But you don't know anything. You just don't even ask. 
She's going to figure that out. And when she wants to have a baby, she'll just stop using it. Ew, my. Well, I guess, uh, so what would you do? Would you just drop her if you were in my position, Tom? I wouldn't have a girlfriend or anything that looks like a girlfriend. I know that. I know that. All right, Tom, take me out Kobe style. Thanks. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. The Christian Science Monitor has a big story about women saying that women are are being hard hit by the lousy economy. And I say, why is that our problem? One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Lynn on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Actually, yeah. I just wanted to make a comment about the guy who uh, got the girl pregnant, and he gives her the ATM card only to buy groceries, and that's it. Well, I did this for so many years. I would uh, go and buy $50 MasterCard gift cards on your way out through the check stand. Just use them during the week. Oh, really? Yeah, because, I mean, it just comes up as like a gift card, and it looks like it, everything else on there. So right in the middle, you just, here, can you scan this for me, too? Put 50 bucks on it. Thanks. Look at that. I will try to warn these guys. Yep. Well, you have a good day, Tom. Thank you, Lynn. Appreciate the call. This is what I'm saying. She doesn't get your credit card. She doesn't get your ATM card. She doesn't get your checks. You don't get a joint checking account with pictures of kitties and puppies on it and both your names on it. You don't buy a house together. You don't buy a condo together. You don't buy furniture together. Each of you owns your own stuff. So when things don't work out, you can go your own separate ways. And no matter how good a relationship seems today, it could go down the drain tomorrow. We hear from them all the time. Women, supposedly harder hit by the lousy economy than men. Should we be concerned about that? Tom, Tom, like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. Dude, you've given me the roadmap to go over the wall, get in my neighbor's yard, and get my testicles out of a tree. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. What's up, like it's a show? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. A story in the Christian Science Monitor. It says women are more hard hit by the economy than men. So what? Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Son, how are you? Uh, another day, another dollar. You know what? Benjamin. Is. I do. <laughs> many, many dollars on your side. Yes. Well, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, thank you. Well, I heard that uh, women are being really affected by the economy, and I just really can't agree on that because I'm in construction. I'm a partner in a construction firm uh, based out of Hermosa Beach, and I can't say I've seen too many women asking me for a job. I could be... At the bar, I don't hear women crying about how they lost their job at their call center or at their subway. But last year, I had we were begging for help, and this and in the past week, we've had over a hundred guys and good men, not losers, ask us for jobs because they got laid off. I don't think the women have been affected at all. I still see them driving Lexuses. I still see them. Driving all nice and shiny stuff while we're, be we're we're breaking our backs to make this, to just trying to break even. Well, this is why I tell the guys, if you want to eliminate that, what you have to do is you have to just say, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to uh, take a check in. I am not going to, uh, I, I'm not going to be paying anybody's bills. Exactly. I'm not going to be lending anybody my credit card, et cetera. Yeah, that, get out of the ATM thing. Bad move. Right. Now, I've been listening to you for about, I'd say, eh, give or take a year. I dumped my girlfriend the day I listened to you. I am single, 22, no no credit cards in a girl's name. I, I am a partner in a great firm. I'm making great money. 
And I'm getting more ass than, 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 how do you say, a toilet seat. More ass than a toilet seat because those women are competing to be the next Mrs. You. Mrs. Me. And uh, what, been you, there once. The, well, the trick is to never marry any of them. It, it, I, I use the example all the time of test driving that Maserati. Ever done that? Ever gone test driven like a a car you can't afford? Oh yeah, oh you yeah. Go to, you go to the deal. You know how this works. You go to the dealer and they look at you like they look down their nose at you like, "What are you doing here?" But you say, "You know what? I wanna I wanna try out. Uh, I wanna do a test drive of the most expensive car you have." And so they take you on a test drive. Uh huh. And there you are. You sell. You smell that leather and you sink into that seat and you put your hand on the stick and you start that car and you you, you just tap the gas pedal and the thing goes room and it, it's faster than anything you've ever driven and there you are zigzagging in and out of traffic and just ride it hard. You're giving me tingles, and, man. Right? I mean, really. And then it happens so you get back to the dealership and the salesman says to you, what would it take to get you into this car today? And your response is, let me think about that, and I'll get back to you. No. Now, if you now, well, but the thing is, if you know how to do that, that's what you do with chicks. All right. Always be test driving the Maseratis, and then later they're going to try to close the deal. Don't ever close the deal. Never. Never close the deal. I learned my lesson. Right. Never, ever close the deal. Never. Always test drive. Never buy the car. Yeah, I knew test drive this weekend, actually. If you know what I mean. I do, indeed. <laughs> well, it's good to hear from you, Dad. Please take me out Kobe style. Here you go, Alex. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Olivia, on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hi Tom. How are you doing? Great. Well, um, I was just calling in in regards to the um, comment and the statement about the women and the economy. I have actually um, about some of the callers saying that they haven't noticed a lot of women being affected by it, and um, I'm actually one of them. I was in the escrow industry for six years and unfortunately was laid off in January. And um, when it happened, I I was very upset, very angry, bitter, very bitter. Um, I didn't understand why a company that I'd given so many hours and time and energy to could do this, but, you know, it was just something that happened with the market and a lot of fellow employees are going through the same position as I am right now. Of course! Yeah, so... I um, was calling. I wanted to get, you know, possibly your advice on what type of industry to get into now. Uh, my employment, unemployment period is coming up to a close at the end of next month. And, Darling, um, um, let me guess. You didn't bother to go to college. No, you're wrong. I did. <laughs> what What was I, your major? I uh, attended um, Cal Poly Pomona, and I was a music major there. A music I, major. Went, I was a music major, um, have sung all my life, wanted to get into the um, entertainment industry, uh, music business side of things as well, possibly recording and producing. And I then went to London, England, and studied abroad there for two years. Um, meaning, meaning, meaning you studied what exactly? The London underground, the London nightclub scene? London men with their clothes off. What were you studying there? A little bit of both. Yeah, actually, right. you know, I was doing music business, and um, I actually have a, an Irish passport, so I was able to work over there in the pubs and enjoy life and experience the whole London scene. And now and you're so paying I, for it. Yeah, I kind of, you know, I kind of got disenchanted with the whole music industry while I was over there. And I came well, back because you here. learned that you learned uh, the the real truth. You never did any homework before you majored in in music about what the music industry is like. And uh, the music industry is Mick Jagger makes four hundred million dollars a year, and you make nothing. That's the music right. industry. <laughs> That's how it works. And you know what? I wasn't going into it for for the for the money per se. I was going into it for the love of music because, like I said, I had been singing all my life, and I went into it. 
because Darling, was- you can you continue singing, okay? Yeah. You don't have to go to school. Right. And but waste tuition I and to make time. Myself more marketable and more profitable and have a degree in music and know music theory and understand it. Do you think and- Bono did that? Um, I know there are a lot of artists that don't read music, but I know the majority of them that are making money in the industry now are songwriters. I, they understand did I, music. I, I said, they do you think they went it. to do you think they went to four years of school to learn how to write music? Some of them have. Yeah, some of them most have. Most of, of them. I'm talking about lucky. They were in the darling, right place at the right I'm time. talking about most of them. Most of them, no, because they were in the right place at the right time and they got lucky. Or they looked right for the part or they uh, let's face it uh, there's a lot of people say they bone the right the record company executive mm-hmm. right right how many record company executives have we heard of who've been married to some of the hottest chicks in music yeah I know well a lot of them. <laughs> so you see going to a university is not what makes you successful as a musician it's a scam. It's like people go to school to study broadcasting. It's right. a joke. Okay, it's a joke. And if you did a minimal amount of research before you went to school, you would know this. Well, you know, I did do research, and when when I was over in London, like I said, I it just became, I guess, unrealistic. And I wasn't really sure then what I wanted to do. So I came back here to California, and... I fell into the real estate industry in Escrow. Because that's where women know. that's where but women that's, fall when they can't find a job. Escrow, I mean, I was, mortgages. I was so I could find a job very easily. Darling, you but, were educated with a music degree. Amongst other things. What other amongst, degrees do you have? No, amongst general education. I mean, take the sociology and the psychology majors. Also a waste. So I'm now thinking that back to my question is, as I fell into the escrow industry and I became good at it, and I realized this is something that and now, and wasted and and degree. wasted more time, and you wasted more time uh, with the silly notion that the real estate industry is going to continue to be as hot as a pistol, which mm-hmm. it isn't, right? And never was going to be, right? So your your life is a series of bad calculations based on wanting to have the least amount of responsibility as possible. No, I wouldn't say bad calculations. No, I wouldn't. Oh, really? So you think you think getting a job in the escrow industry was was a job for life? Not when I went into it, but as I as I was in it more, I realized that this is a a, a job that. I could make a good living. I'm not talking about how much you could make. I, did you honestly believe you'd be getting a gold watch from an escrow company? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did, unfortunately. You were an idiot. You were an idiot. Can I be honest with you? You were I an did. idiot. <laughs> you were an idiot. Because anybody with half a brain knew that all the people who took out those low interest rate mortgages back in 2002 was uh-huh. going to get the rates jacking up five years later in 2007. Exactly. Anybody with half a brain. I, I did all those, and I did all the escrows for those poor souls. I did. Yeah, and you made your living off those people. And I want to tell you something else. I'm not in the real estate business. I'm not in the escrow business. Why did I know this and you didn't? Well, you know what? I was I was 22 at the time, so I didn't. When I got into escrow, I didn't even know what escrow was. Amazing. No and now it says no here you're 28. So. In. So, sure enough, like I predicted, in 2002, when all these poor slobs were signing up for their subprime mortgages, you were right there to write the paper. And then somehow you got this stupid notion that the real estate business was going to stay hot for the rest of your life. It hasn't stayed hot for anybody's entire lifetime. But you, again, no research, no thinking. You jumped in. You said, look at this. I'm making all this money and no effort, no education required. This is fantastic. Yeah, you Whatever know, made you think... Money. But yeah. whatever made you, the, the point is, darling, and you don't want to admit this, you know, you went to London to get boned and to hang out with British guys with British accents and <laughs> hang out at clubs till 4 o'clock in the morning drinking warm beer and, and to have this experience in your life. You didn't do it because you thought it was a good career or you thought you were going to make millions and millions of dollars. You did it because you were, you were too lazy to decide what you wanted to be when you grew up. 
No. That's, yes. I, I, I've got a different well, career. darling, you've now wasted all these years. You're 28, and you are no closer to having a career than you were when you were in college. No closer. And until you accept that, you will never succeed at anything. And I'm being nice to you. Yeah. Well, then, I guess, where do I go from here? <laughs> well, where you go from here is maybe you go back to school and get an advanced degree in something that counts. Business administration, for example. Something That's that might require you to get a real job where you have to show up at 9 o'clock in the morning five goddamn days a week for the rest know, of your but life. It's, but it's so depressing. No, well, darling. <laughs> You know what's really depressing? Moving into the uh, freeway underpass with Ed McMahon, which is where you're going. <laughs> no. You and Evander Holyfield, they're under the uh, freeway overpass. No, I'd like to think not. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd, you know, I'd like to think Santa Claus is coming to town. Mm. I'd like to think if I jumped off a building, I'd survive. Yeah. I'd like to think that. I I was thinking um, I was thinking a bit of business administration side of things, um, but in the meantime, in order to I, I have I, I have a year left of that if I wanted to do that type of degree. So I mean, what's I, what would be something that you would recommend in doing that and having to do the night classes and working full time and managing those type of things? What would be you know, something that's going to provide a decent living that's not going to drive you crazy, that you're going to be darling, able to go in. Darling, darling, real work, day, real work drives you crazy. Yeah. You don't want to do real work. I want to do something that I like. How, how, I want to do something that I enjoy, that I don't dread going into. Yeah, but it, beyond that, you don't want to work hard. No, I, I will work hard. I mean, I put in 10, 12 hours at least a day when I was in the escrow industry and didn't complain one bit. And look where it got me in the end, laid off. Yeah, but the bottom line here is that there was so no I way that was going to last. You know what? I did work uh, hard. ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is going to be in business for a long time. Microsoft's going to be in business for a long time. Okay? Big companies. Well, wow, that are corporate and they are corporate environments. That's what's going to last a long time. Most women I know don't want to be in the office at nine in the morning, don't want to be told what to do, don't want to be there five days a week, find it depressing. Well, guess what? That's why men make more money than women. No, I guess that's just life. That's how women are and that's how men are. That's why men make more money than women. You are a living example of what this story talks about. No, you know what? I, 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 to be nice and to be honest with you, Tom, I don't mind working hard. I don't. I enjoy going to work. I don't have. I'm married. If you didn't children. mind, if you didn't mind working hard, I like going to work. You would have gone to a four-year university and studied something serious. Now, even people who have good jobs in the music business, like union tuba player at the L.A. Philharmonic, for example, mm -hmm. those people don't make that much money. Right. There just isn't that much money in the music business. It's like the radio business. Yeah. I make a zillion dollars, but the average person reads the card that says a bigger mix is a better variety. They make crap. Well, how do you get the both, best of both worlds? And you don't get the best of both worlds. You pick one and you work your ass off, or you pick the other, a mindless job, and you get no security and uh, lousy pay. That's how the world works. Yeah, but there's people that work hard and they do what they love, and they have a lot of money. And there's some that don't. So, but but you know, but the point is, the you have to find something you love that makes a lot of money. And I thought I did, but you know what? At 18 years old, going into college, most people, I think it's too young. Most people don't realize what they want to do and what they're good at until they're at least 25. And by that time. You've been working. I think that's. I think that's only because they've been coddled. Home. I think that's because they've been coddled by their parents, or they smoke too much weed, <laughs> or they're enjoying getting boned all day. No, that's. I mean, that's most people. Uh, there's very few. You're that, one of them. At a young age, I'm that want to be doctors, that want to be dentists, that want to be. Lawyers, that's why. That by the way, can I tell you something? You want to know that. something? You want to in in a country where anything is possible, anything. OK, that's why there's so few of us rich people here, because people like you are lazy and won't work as hard as we rich people. 
Thank God they, that people like you don't provide competition for people like me. I'm I'm not lazy, and I'm just trying to... Darling, you're 28, and you don't know what you want to be when you grow up. Don't. <laughs> you are married, and you have kids, you said? Don't have any kids. You're married. Uh-huh. You want to have kids. I'm not sure. And you still don't know what you want to be when you grow up? No. That's laziness. I, I don't know. Laziness. I, I'm trying to figure out what, what interests me. I mean, going to a job. Darling, darling, this is if you are bored by the world, you've got problems. You really need to see a shrink. I am in therapy, so I don't say that lightly. If this big, beautiful world is so boring to you, you need help. No, it's not boring, but I'm just I'm trying to be realistic. No, you're not. You're trying to be unrealistic. You want a job where you come in whenever you feel like it. No. Work hard, no, but that's work. Not, no, that's not the truth. And, and I, do, I, do whatever you love and get paid lots and lots and lots of money for it without having to give it much thought. No, because that's that's not realistic. And that's that's for... Why haven't you given it thought? You're 28. Because I, I, I when I was in the escrow industry, like I said, I enjoyed it. And why weren't you spending that time? Say, why weren't you saying to yourself, "Well, this is a limited time offer, so I'm going to sock away as much cash as I can, so I can go back to school, I and I'm going to spend time, time offer. because you were an idiot." Do you understand? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with love. I'm saying this with love. You were an idiot. How, why did I know your job wasn't going to last? There's always going to be escrows. No, there aren't always going to be so many people doing them. But there are. But there is always going to be escrow. And right, but, well, yeah. and guess what? The people who own the companies and the people who've been doing it the longest will keep the jobs. But but the fact is, there is no demand like there was two or three years ago. Right, right, and I and I was with a large corporation and, that and since you were right there and, and you saw all these morons who couldn't rub two nickels together getting houses mm -hmm. at interest rates that were so low it would curl your hair, knowing the interest rates were going to go up in five years, that should have set an alarm bell off in your head. I've got five years at this gig. Yeah. When interest rates go up, there's going to be layoffs. Mm-hmm. It, it, it didn't take much of a brain, but you didn't want to think about it. You just loved I all the money I, you were making. I, I thought I was the lucky one. I thought I was going to be safe. I did. I thought I would be. No one is safe. Hello? No one is safe. Not you, not me, not anybody. Nobody is safe. I was in denial about it. Do you know what makes you safe? Saving as much as you can, investing as much as you can, having an FU fund in the bank so that people, if they fire you, you don't have to think about it. That's what makes you safe. Companies will put an axe in your back without thinking about it. That is yeah. how it works. General Motors is talking about filing for bankruptcy. Do you understand? Companies will put the axe in your back. Big ones, small ones, all of them. That is how it works. So then working for those large corporations, like you said, ExxonMobil, Microsoft, is just the same well, it's time. your best. It is your best shot at long-term employment, but the best shot at security is saving and investing, which most women don't want to do. Right. So it falls to the man, the man you marry, the man you might marry. That guy could take care of all that boring stuff like planning for retirement and saving, but you're buying shoes. You're flying to London. You're having fun. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Now you're paying for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now I've got to figure out. Welcome to the real world where the rest of us live. What's going to be exciting to go to you at 8 a.m. every morning? Well, darling, join the club. Uh, you know what? They're always going to pay you to do it when you feel like doing it. No, they're not. I mean, even I have to be here at a particular time every day. Right. Whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. Yeah, and I, I accept that. So I, I, By the I, way, I, I even, let's take movie stars. 
where it looks like all they do is they're on entertainment tonight and they walk on the red carpet and they're going to foreign countries and adopting children. When they're making a movie, call time is what? 5 a.m.? 4 a.m.? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to be there. No. <laughs> So what it boils down to is you're not willing to do what it takes. You're not. Because some jobs require being there at 5 a.m. Yeah, but for having, what, three, six months off during the year like most of them do and hanging around Starbucks and Baja Fresh, that doesn't seem like a bad life, waking up Darling, at let me tell you something. I live in the belly of the beast. I live in the Hollywood Hills, and I live right near that coffee bean on Sunset Strip there where, where the out-of-work actors hang out. Right. Eighty-five percent of the members... 85% of the Screen Actors Guild is unemployed at any given time. 85%. Mm-hmm. You are living in a dream world. Musicians get paid crap. Actors get paid crap. Television performers get paid crap. Do you know why I don't do a television program? I think I, you think I've never been offered one? No, because it pays less than I make to work here. Wow, the TV would pay less than radio? Uh, if you make a lot of money in radio, it can. Many people in radio make a lot more than you think. Many wow. people in TV make less than you think. And, and you are just plain lazy. Like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. I got at least 10 women I can call right now who are between the 7 and the 10 who will come over here and do my every desire because of the things that Tom likes and Tom needs. It's the Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likes Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Pat on the Tom Likes Show. Hello. Hi, it's Patty, actually. Whichever. Um, <laughs> whichever. Well, I was kind of concerned because when you were talking with that last lady, um, you had mentioned that, like, sociology was a wrong field to go into. Not if you want to make money, it's not a good field. Well, I know, like, yeah, money is probably, like, not going to be, you're not going to be, like, really well off, but I'm going into social work, and to me it was just kind of more important to have a flexible schedule and to, well, that's um, what most women say. And when women say they want a flexible schedule, that means they don't want to come in at 9 and leave at 5 and have to work five days a week. No, and, it means that I don't want to be stuck in an office. Like, I well, want to be able to again, like, that's to, like, why women make less money than men do. I'm not complaining. I own property, so I'm not like really like totally worried. I'm still saying, but, but darling, I'm not talking about whether you're worried. That is why women make less money than men do, because they have an attitude like yours. Okay, but I'm not talking about making money. I was just asking, like, your opinion about the field. <laughs> like, the fe- well, the caller brought it up because she majored in it, uh-huh. and she said she wanted to make money. I said, wrong field. No good. Okay. Yeah, that, no, like, I, I own real estate. Like, I'm not trying to, like, sell real estate. Like, I own it, and I own rental property, but I also want to have a job that I could, like, you know, just keep me busy and have, like, a little money on the side. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not, like, trying to start an argument with you. No, I understand but, uh, that. But you're, you're asking me this question. Um, yeah, so I, you, you, know, you wouldn't recommend it, like, as I, far as security? I wouldn't recommend it to people who want to make money, no. How about security, though? Like, do you, it, like you were saying, like, real estate for her, like, she should have seen that that wasn't going to be. Who wants to be deal? secure in a job that doesn't pay well? Well, I mean, to me, like I said, like I have another source of income that's not... But most people don't. That other caller, Olivia, she doesn't. I know, but I'm talking about me. (laughs) Oh, you! (laughs) Well, uh, you know, it's just as good as any other way to kill time, which sounds like what you're trying to do. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. My original goal was with chemistry, and that was just kind of not my... Like, I could have made a lot of money, but I think it was like an unethical field. Chemistry? Yes. Why is chemistry an unethical field? If you know anything about the pharmaceutical companies, you'll understand. Like ah, but you think it. you think that being a poverty pimp that is an ethical field? A poverty pimp? That's right. How is helping people live a happier life? Uh, you're taking money out of my pocket and putting it into the pockets of people who don't work as hard as I do. I don't see how ethical that is either. The Tom Likas Show.